In this video, I want to explain how you can derive the ideal gas law from some basic principles. And you actually need three principles to do this, the first of which is Boyle's law. And what Boyle found was if you do an experiment and you record your results and you plot a graph of V against one over the pressure, you get a perfect straight line relationship. And this is telling you that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to one over the pressure. And this makes sense experimentally. So let's imagine that you are to have a container with a certain number of gas particles in it. If you were to double the volume of that container, so the particles are now much more spread out, there's going to be far fewer collisions with the walls happening per second, and therefore you're gonna have less pressure. So you can imagine that if you're not changing the number of molecules and you're not changing the temperature, that doubling the size of the container, so doubling the volume, is going to half the pressure. And that's exactly what Boyle found. And so he said that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to one over the pressure. That's the first law. The second law is Charles' law. And he did a very similar kind of experiment. He looked at the relationship between volume and temperature and again found that this was a straight line relationship. His experiment you can see is very similar. So you've got some particles, you heat them to one temperature and you get a certain volume. If you were to heat that to a much higher temperature, the volume increases. So as the particles get more energy, you are exerting more pressure on this um, piston here. So it's going to move up the way. And so what he found is that volume of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature. So if you double the temperature, you end up with the doubling of the volume. And so that's another relationship. The third one is Avogadro's law. Avogadro, again, similar idea. He looked at the number of moles versus the volume of a gas. And so he found a nice straight line relationship, it's very similar, and it's kind of intuitive. If you have one mole of gas, that will take up a certain volume. And if you have two moles, you can imagine that that's going to double the volume if you're keeping everything else constant. And so you've got volume one in the case where you have one mole of gas and you have a volume of 2V where you have two moles. So Avogadro's law tells us that the number of moles is directly proportional to the volume of a gas. We can actually put these three relationships together and something interesting will happen. So we've got the three laws. We've got Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Avogadro's law. And if we combine all of these together, we can show that volume is directly proportional to N times T over P. You see, we've got volume is directly proportional to N. Then we've got the T here, that's giving us NT. And then we've got the P, which is going on the bottom there. This is a proportionality relationship. And if we want to turn it from being proportional to being equal, we have to introduce a constant. And the constant is R. So volume is actually equal to R times this expression. And R is your gas constant. And so we can write the equation, as you may be familiar, as PV equals NRT. This is one form of the ideal gas law. There is also another way to express the gas law, which is actually really well worth knowing as well. So we've got PV equals NRT is our classic statement of the ideal gas law. We can actually rearrange this to get an expression for R. So what this is saying is that if you take the pressure of the gas times the volume of the gas, divide by N, which is the number of moles, and multiply that by the temperature of the gas, every single time you do that for an ideal gas, you will get the gas constant. So in other words, this whole expression is equal to a constant value. So what you can say from that is where you have one situation where you have a particular set of these values, say situation one, that's gonna be equal to another situation, say situation two, where you have different values for the pressure, volume, the number of moles and temperature. So these form like a set and they're always ending up being equal because all of this is R and then all of this is R. So in other words, you're saying R equals R. So when you change something about the gas, say you moved it to a different size container, you could use this relationship to work out what some other things would be about it if you had the other P 
pieces of information. So I hope this video was helpful to you and you now understand the two forms of the ideal gas law. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe below. And finally, thank you very much for watching.